All right, so let me talk about cervical disorders now. So this is the opening to the womb, okay? So we have something called cervical dysplasia. And we talked about dysplasia before. This is making abnormal cells, okay? Cervical dysplasia is abnormal cell growth of the cervix. It may be due to an infection. Maybe there's something precancerous that's happening over there. Or there's just frank cancer that's happening, okay? The problem is, is that we need to look at this further. This is the whole purpose of us doing pap smears. Pap smears is going to pick up cervical dysplasia. We want to catch it early. If it's going to be an infection, then that's something not so much to worry about. Let's give them some uh, antibiotics. Like when I say infection, it's sexually transmitted uh, diseases, chlamydia, gonorrhea, which again I'll talk about when we get into the male reproductive system. But um, that can cause um, uh, dysplasia to happen, and those we can, uh, we can fix easily because we just give them antibiotics, okay? Um, and then we'll have them come back in three months and we'll redo the pap smear, okay? Um, but if it's precancerous, we need to do some other tests to make sure that we can get rid of this, this uh, area, all right? So if we just let it sit there, the problem is obviously it can go and cause cancer. So we have this so-called Papa Nicolau uh, smear, right? Uh, the Papa Nicolau, where that came come from? Well, that's actually from a gynecologist that came up with this procedure. Uh, this is what we call an eponym, if you go back to chapter one, right? Uh, it's named after the person who came up with this procedure back in the 1950s or so. They kind of cut it short to pap smear, much easier to say, okay? So they put a speculum in. A speculum is that little, if you uh, women know what I'm talking about, the, uh, the ductile kind of thing. I'll show you pictures of it, right? And that goes inside the vagina. Um, and that allows us to visualize the vagina and the cervix, and that's where they're going to do a pap smear, okay? So we take uh, a sampling of the cervical cells, and we screen for it for the dysplasia. And it gets sent to the lab to see what's going on. So side view-wise, just so you can see what's going on here, this is the spectrum that I talked about, this, um, um, this ductile thing. Um, but that's where this is, that's the ductile here, the speculum. So when it goes in, we can open this up and we can actually visualize the, uh, the lining of the vagina itself and the cervix. We can't go in and take a look inside the uh, uterus with these other procedures to do that. But you can see the cervix and you can see the vagina. this way to take a look and when we look at it head on that's what we see as a cervix. So this is the head of the cervix itself. This darker area around here is going to be the vagina. Okay? And there's the opening, that little what we call cervical os, OS. The cervical os, the opening to the womb, okay, or the uterus. And that's what we're seeing. So that's what a doctor would see, or any medical professional who does these procedures. That's a speculum over here, so you can see inside, and that's what an actual cervix looks like. Okay, again, this is the cervix, and this opening here is a cervical eye. If a person has a menstruation, you would see blood trickling from there. And believe it or not, that little opening is going to open all the way so that the baby's head and the shoulders, which is much bigger than the head, goes through. All right? So that's what we're talking about when the cervix is open, okay? is ripening. And when we do a pap smear, what we do is, here's the speculum, we take a spatula and we go around one 360 degrees, go back the other way, and then we also like to do a cervical, uh, a cytobrush to get the, the, the canal of the cervix. This will go all the way in. It's very small. You could say it's about a centimeter long, the, the actual brushes. And we just twist it uh, 360, one way, 360, the other way, and that's it. We also have a cervical broom that can do both at the same time. The only thing is with these, they're not 100% uh, reliable. We get better responses or better results when we do these two things over here. Although these are getting a little bit better um, with the new preservatives that they could put the uh, specimen on. Okay. 
Okay? So this is what cervical dysplasia looks like. This is a pretty severe case over here. But this is the cervical oz, the opening. But you can see there's something going on over here. When I see something like this, I need to take, you know, I, I probably would bypass the whole uh, uh, pap smear because I know there's something on it. Remember, pap smear is just a screening test to see if there's dysplasia. I'm looking at this, and just with my naked eyes, I can look at that, that and say that there's something going on there. I want to just take a biopsy of that. I don't, you know, I want to take some of the tissue, not just the, the, the shavings of the tissue. I want an actual clip a piece of it off and do a cervical biopsy because I know it's going to come back out normal. I want to see what it is. Just skip a step, so to say. Okay? All right, so let's talk about cervical carcinoma, okay? Cervical cancer. This is a very, very slow-growing cancer, thank God, okay? And that's why we have the wonderful pap smear. It may take five years to go from a precancerous state to a cancer state. Now, there are certain things that would speed that up. Keep in mind, cervical cancer is caused by what? Yes, the HPV virus, the, humo, the human papilloma virus. So this is a sexually transmitted disease that leads to cancer. But it's a very slow-growing thing. So if I got someone who, um, who had stage 1 cancer and didn't follow up with me, and they didn't follow up until the following year. Now, normally, if you have stage one cancer, you're getting a phone call from me, to, you know, to be back in my office that next week so we can do something, right? Even if it's slow growing, we don't like to play games with cancer. Most people, if not all, everyone does not like cancer, so we want to get it out of your body if you can or treat it. So what we have is if a woman who had a pap smear. Um, or a biopsy, and it shows that she does have dysplasia or she has stage 1 cancer, uh, like carcinoma in situ. And then she doesn't see me again until the following year. She skipped her appointments for whatever reason, just being non-compliant. If I do another biopsy, I may only see, let's say, stage 1 still, or maybe it's stage 2. But I shouldn't see stage 4. It doesn't grow that fast. Okay. But if I do see stage four after one year, that's very fast. Then there's something else going on, okay? So again, this is the human papilloma virus that's causing it. Sexually transmitted. There's new vaccines, as you know, that's going out there, okay? The pap smear is done, and then we've got to do this colposcopy. If the pap smear shows up as dysplasia, then we're going to do a colposcopy, and during this colposcopy, the fancy word of just looking at the uh, inside the vagina of the cervix with a microscope, okay, we're then going to take a biopsy with that microscope, okay, basically with a magnifying glass, okay, and that's what it looks like, all right, so you have this cancer that's happening on there, if it's like stage one or stage two. Now, let me go back to that story. If she had stage 1 cancer, I'm just giving you an example. If she had stage 1 cancer, cervical cancer, or even stage 0, which is carcinoma in situ, okay? If it's stage 1 and she misses her appointment, she's not compliant, she doesn't come back to me until a year later. I should only expect to stay at the same stage or maybe move up one stage. But if she comes back to me a year later, it could be fourth stage cancer, now I'm thinking something else is going on. Is her immune system not holding down that HPV advancement? Does that make sense? That it's not going to fight against the HPV to cause trauma. I'm thinking things like, well, corticosteroids is one of long usage of that because that decreases your immune system. But the one that I'm most concerned with is what? when your immune system goes down. Yeah, HIV, okay? So I'm more concerned about moving up from stage one to stage four. One year's time, I need to do other lab tests on her to make sure she doesn't have HIV. Does that make sense? Because that's too fast for that to happen, okay? 
So the symptoms of um, cervical cancer, postcoital bleeding. Again, that's usually the one of the most common signs that we actually see is that after having intercourse, sexual intercourse, that she sees some blood afterwards. Now, yeah, people could have some rough sex and stuff, but I'm talking about something where it's, it, it doesn't make sense why she would be bleeding. Does that make sense? Either way, you should get yourself checked. There shouldn't be blood coming out there, unless, of course, your menstrual period just started or something like that. You get a vaginal discharge, it happens, or some sort of pain with this. Okay? So the treatment depends on the severity. We can either do a what we call conization, which is taking a comb biopsy. I'll show you what that looks like. It's kind of the shape of a comb. So we leave the uterus there, but we're just taking a portion of the cervix. You can do more extensive surgery. Again, depends on what stage you're at, and it's way over the scope of this course. You may have to remove part of the vagina, the uterus, the ovaries, and whatnot. You may have to give chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Again, depends on what stage you're looking at. So cone biopsy is taking a cut, and you could either use laser or you can use uh, just a scalpel to do this. Um, but we would remove this section over here, making it look like a comb. So this allows you to still have a baby. Does that make sense? Because we're, if we took a section out that was not a comb, then the baby's not going to be able to be held up there very well. You're going to have a miscarriage. But doing this, allows the baby to be in there. Now we may have to do something called a surclage. We might have to put a stitch around here once you become pregnant. Okay? But again, that's over the scope of this course. But we usually do that or we use it with a knife. And we cut around there like that to remove uh, a comb, sh uh, comb shape. Okay?